All right, Fusion fans, buckle up, because today we are diving headfirst into the heart of Fusion Power. That's right, and we are going deep. We're talking about tokamax, plasma hotter than the sun, and these things called ELMs that are like tiny solar flares wreaking havoc inside these reactors. You've sent us a ton of research on this. We have. And clearly you're ready to go beyond the basics. It's a fascinating area of research. Understanding ELMs is crucial if we want to unlock the potential of fusion energy. And that's our mission today. We're going to break down exactly what ELMs are, why they're such a challenge, and what scientists are doing to control these miniature bursts of fury. By the end of this deep dive, you'll be able to explain it all better than I can. You'll be fluent in fusion, ready to impress anyone who dares to bring it up at a party. Now, to really grasp the wild world of ELMs, we need to start with a quick recap of how fusion works, specifically in these tokamak reactors. Imagine, if you will, a giant metal donut. Okay, I'm imagining it. No, seriously. It sounds strange, but that shape is crucial. Exactly. Inside this donut, we're using incredibly powerful magnets to contain a swirling vortex of plasma. Now, when we say plasma, forget what you learned in high school science class. This isn't your average neon sign. No, not at all. We're talking about a superheated gas heated to temperatures hotter than the core of the sun. It's in this extreme state that the magic of fusion happens. Right. And for a while, things were looking good with this thing called uh, H-mode. Basically, the tokamak goes into overdrive, the plasma gets super duper confined, and we're all doing a happy dance because it means more energy. Or well, like with most things in fusion, there's a catch. You see, achieving stable, sustained fusion is like trying to contain a miniature star in a bottle. And hold it steady while it tries to break free. Right? Precisely. H-mode, while great for energy production, is also when these LMs, or edge localized modes, decide to show up and party. And not the fun kind of party. No. Okay, so we've got our superheated plasma. It's in H mode. And then, bam! What are these elements and why are they such party crashers? Imagine this. Tiny solar flares erupting from the edge of this confined plasma. These ELMs are filaments of plasma, incredibly hot and dense, carrying electric current, and they lash out with surprising force. So, like, mini explosions going off inside the reactor. Yikes. No wonder scientists are a little stressed about them. And what makes them even trickier is their unpredictability. One minute the plasma is behaving, the next, these filaments are forming and ejecting energy outwards. It's this explosive energy release that poses a major challenge for fusion reactors. Imagine building a house that has to withstand tiny, unpredictable earthquakes every few minutes. Talk about a fixer-upper nightmare. So what causes these filaments to form? Is it just the intense heat and pressure inside the tokamak? It's a bit more nuanced than that. Remember how we talked about each mode and how the plasma gets extra confined? Well, that confinement comes with a price. It creates these steep pressure gradients at the edge of the plasma, and these gradients are the perfect breeding ground for ELMs. Think of it like squeezing a balloon in the middle. The pressure has to go somewhere. And in this case, it creates these filamentary eruptions. Our research mentions several models that scientists use to describe ELM behavior. There's one called the leaky hose pipe model, which sounds dot descriptive. It really is. Imagine the edge of the plasma is like a hose with tiny holes punched in it. Instead of a smooth flow, you get these jets of water spraying out erratically. That's essentially what's happening with these ELM's bursts of plasma squirting out from the edges due to the intense pressure. Okay, leaky hose pipe. Got it. But it's not just the pressure, right? Our research mentioned something about magnetic reconnection being involved too, which sounds intense. Yeah, magnetic reconnection. What exactly is going on with the magnetic fields during these ELM bursts? You're right. It's not just about pressure. It's about this interplay of pressure and those powerful magnetic fields we use to contain the plasma. You see, these magnetic field lines, they can snap and reconnect in a process called, you guessed it, magnetic reconnection. Imagine twisting two rubber bands together, then suddenly they snap and reconnect in a, a different configuration. That snapping and reconnecting releases a burst of energy, and that's what's happening with ELMs on a much, much grander scale. Wow, so we've got these tiny solar flares powered by pressure gradients and magnetic reconnection events. It's a recipe for disaster. It's like a recipe for a plasma party gone wrong. Exactly, and all that energy released by these ELMs has to go somewhere. Unfortunately, that somewhere is off in the walls of the tokamak reactor. Ouch. Not ideal for a machine that's trying to contain the power of a star. So what can be done about it? Are scientists just, like, crossing their fingers and hoping for the best? Not quite. 
Remember those researchers we likened to plasma detectives earlier? They're hard at work trying to unravel the mysteries of ELMs and find ways to control them. Because as you said, we can't have these miniature starbursts blasting holes in our fusion reactors every few seconds. Exactly. And the good news is they're making progress. They're using a multi-pronged approach. One is to try and mitigate the damage ELMs can cause, and the other is to suppress them altogether. Okay, so it's like a two-pronged attack on these plasma party crashers. That's a good way to put it. Let's start with mitigation. How do you make a miniature solar flare less, well, explosive? One method is to use what's called pellet injection. Pellet injection, okay. Imagine tiny pellets of frozen fuel being shot into the plasma at incredibly high speeds. Like, uh, like firing a snowball into a furnace. In a way, yes. These pellets help to disrupt the pressure buildup at the edge of the plasma. Remember those pressure gradients we talked about? Pellet injection helps to smooth them out, which in turn triggers more frequent, but smaller ELMs. So instead of one big explosion, you get a bunch of smaller ones. Precisely. It's like the difference between a cannon blast and a series of firecracker pops. The total energy release might be similar, but the damage potential is significantly reduced. Clever. Are there any other mitigation techniques in the works? Absolutely. Another method involves using magnetic coils to give the plasma a little kick. A kick. Like a magnetic boot nudging the plasma back into line. You could say that. These precisely timed magnetic pulses can help control the frequency of ELM bursts, making them more predictable and manageable. So it's all about outsmarting these ELMs, finding ways to anticipate their moves and minimize their impact. Exactly. But while mitigation can significantly reduce the headaches ELMs cause, it doesn't eliminate them entirely. And that's where the more ambitious goal of ELM suppression comes into play. Okay. So if mitigation is like putting a shock absorber on a car to make for a smoother ride, suppression is like paving a perfectly flat road. Now you're getting it. Okay. And one of the most exciting avenues for achieving ELM suppression is something called resonant magnetic perturbations, or RMPs for short. Okay, I'll bite. What are RMPs and how do they stop these mini solar flares in their tracks? It's all about manipulating those magnetic fields, creating a kind of magnetic fence around the edge of the plasma. Wait, so we're building a fence inside a magnetic field inside a giant metal donut Fusion is wild. You said it. Yeah. These RMPs are like carefully placed magnetic guardrails that prevent the plasma from getting too close to the edge, which in turn prevents those pressure gradients from getting out of control and triggering ELMs in the first place. So instead of trying to clean up after the party crashers, we're just not inviting them in the first place? Precisely. Okay. And when it works, it's beautiful. A calm, controlled plasma operating at peak efficiency with no ELMs to wreak havoc. Sounds like a fusion engineer's dream come true. It does. But I have to imagine that even with such an elegant solution, there must be challenges. What's the catch with RMPs? Well, you know how it is with fusion. It's always a delicate balancing act. Right. While RMPs have shown incredible promise in suppressing ELMs, there can be trade-offs. Sometimes using RMPs can lead to a decrease in plasma confinement. Ah, so we might be preventing those pesky ELMs, but we're also losing some of that precious plasma we worked so hard to confine in the first place. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. It's a classic case of you win some, you lose some. Yeah. Finding the optimal balance where we can suppress ELMs without compromising plasma confinement too much is an ongoing area of research. And it sounds like researchers are exploring every possible avenue to make fusion a reality. But tell me, are there any other tricks up their sleeves besides these mitigation and suppression strategies? There are. Remember, fusion research is all about pushing boundaries and exploring the unknown. While mitigation and suppression techniques are essential for taming those ELMs, some researchers are taking a different approach. They're exploring entirely new ways to operate tokamaks, hoping to sidestep the ELM problem altogether. Now that's what I call thinking outside the donut. What do these alternative approaches look like? So we've been talking about battling these ELMs, trying to contain them, suppress them. But what if we could just like avoid them altogether? Like hit the do not disturb button on those plasma parties. That's precisely what these alternative operating regimes aim to do. They offer a tantalizing glimpse into a future where ELMs might not be the showstoppers they are today. Okay. You gotta tell me more. What are these magical ELM-free zones? One of the most promising is something called the I-Mode. I-Mode. As in, I can't believe it's not turbulent. You could say that. In I-Mode, the plasma behaves in a rather peculiar way. Hmm. It manages to achieve high-energy confinement, similar to H-Mode, but without those pesky 
edge pressure gradients that lead to ALMs. Mm. Hold on. So high confinement, meaning more energy, but without the risk of those mini explosions. How is that even possible? That's the million dollar question. Researchers are still trying to fully unravel the mechanisms at play. It seems that in eye mode, there's a change in how energy and momentum are transported within the plasma, leading to a more stable edge region. So it's like the plasma develops a built-in self-control mechanism, keeping those ELMs in check without us having to intervene with like fancy magnetic fences or fuel pellets. Uh, that's a great way to put it. And it gets even more interesting. There's another regime called QH mode, which stands for quiescent H mode. Quiescent sounds promising, like peaceful, tranquil, the plasma equivalent of a Zen garden. Exactly. QH mode is another ELM-free zone, but unlike I mode, it actually still operates in the high confinement regime of H mode. Wait, so it's like getting all the benefits of H mode, the high energy confinement, but without the ELM downsides. That sounds almost too good to be true. It's certainly a tantalizing prospect. And while both I-Mode and QH-Mode are still in the early stages of exploration, they represent exciting possibilities for the future of fusion power. It's incredible to think that we could potentially bypass the ELM problem entirely. It really highlights how much there still is to discover in the world of fusion research. Absolutely. Every new finding, every new mode of operation, brings us one step closer to unlocking the immense potential of fusion energy. It's like we're exploring a vast, uncharted territory, and every now and then we stumble upon a hidden oasis. A perfect analogy. And who knows what other surprises await us in this quest for clean energy. That's what makes it so exciting. So to recap for you, our intrepid listener, we've explored the wild world of ELMs, those tiny but mighty eruptions that pose a significant challenge for fusion power. We talked about how scientists are using ingenuity and cutting-edge technology to mitigate their impact and even suppress them entirely. And we've glimpsed into the future where alternative operating regimes like I-Mode and QH-Mode offer the potential for ELM-free fusion power. It's a rapidly evolving field. And each new discovery brings us closer to realizing the dream of clean, safe, and virtually limitless energy. And as we've learned today, it's a journey full of surprises, challenges, and the thrill of pushing the boundaries of human understanding. Now that you're armed with this knowledge, go forth and spread the fusion gospel. Tell your friends, your family, your pets. Let's get everyone excited about the incredible potential of this game-changing technology. Because ultimately, the quest for fusion energy is a shared endeavor. Well said. Until next time, keep those curiosity fires burning. And remember, the future of energy is out there, just waiting to be discovered.